Alrighty. Okay, welcome everybody. If you're still standing, please take this opportunity to take a seat. You'll have plenty of time to talk to each of the projects after the general presentation. So we want to welcome you all to the Stack Spring 2018 Showcase. I'm Camille and I'm the Internal Vice President. I'm a third year IUR major. And if you would like to fill out this attendance form right at the top, it is bit.ly slash stack dash info. So just so we can get your email and you can get future emails from us. Did that work? No, it didn't. No? Okay, now it's working. Okay, so uh, here's the overview of what we're going to go over today. So why space, who we are, what we're projects we're working on, our external sponsors, expansion, some final remarks, and then you get to talk to all the teams, which is what you really came here for. So what's up with space? Um, yeah, so I'll just give like a quick intro to like why um, we're interested in working on space. Um, and so, uh, yeah, one sec. We, yeah, okay. So um, I, I, as you like probably know, like back in 1960s, six, like to the 70s, we went to the moon. Um, and a lot of great things happened in terms of space. And this is the cost. What you're seeing is like the cost per launch um, versus like time. And so, like the cost of launch one kilogram, and as you see, like from 1970s all the way to 2000s, like like not much innovation in space happened. It's like very sporadic. But then finally, back in 2000s all the way till now, the cost of launch uh, a kilogram is falling like exponentially, which is really great. Um, and the reason, and like so, this actually predicted to continue to fall exponentially. Um, so even just by like. Just so as technology improves um, and the like cost to manufacture a rocket declines, we are able to send a lot more flights per year. Which then, like, as you increase the number of flights, you get like cheaper and cheaper costs to build satellites. And like, you don't have to prepare satellites to be like perfect. Um, so all around the whole industry, the cost to enter comes a lot smaller. And so, what this kind of enables is like. A lot of, a lot, a lot, a lot of like people wanting to go to the moon, and this is super important. It's like crazy. We're trying to go back by 2020. Um, some people kind of think it's like a far-reaching idea, but it's like almost three different companies are all trying to do this right now, along with uh, NASA. And so, why is this? It's because in order to go anywhere in our solar system, we have to get out what is called like a gravity well. Uh, this is where space-time is worked because of the mass of the Earth. And so to get out of that requires an excellent, a lot of energy. And so the more mass you want to leave Earth, to have leave Earth, um, it takes more and more rocket fuel to get out of Earth. So the best idea is to go to the moon, create fuel there, and have a smaller gravity well to get out of. Um, and so that's like the real, when you hear all these people trying to go to the moon, this is why. Because it helps enable like longer term uh, missions. And so, this kind of helps explain the expanding industry as of right now in terms of like a startup sense. So once the launch, the launch cost falls, it enables a whole stack of different things. Um, and that's kind of what we're trying to show right here. Um, and you can see that since 2000, like $13 billion has been invested into space startups, which is like pretty absurd for the type of um, like far reaching ideas that are getting funded. Um, so yeah, this is like the number of startups since 2000s in space is like also exponentially increasing because you have an exponential loss, uh, exponential like decline in the cost to launch. So it's it's pretty nicely proven. Um, so yeah, that's kind of why we're doing space research and space technologies and trying to enable things. Um, and now Olivia will like talk about who we are. Uh, Travis didn't introduce himself, but oh, yeah. he is one of the co-presidents of SAC. Uh, my name's Olivia, I'm also, I'm the other co-president. Um, so who we are, we are a student group on campus um, focused on research and space innovation. Um, we have multiple projects and we're really just trying to push the frontier of space. Um, and these are some of our members. Um, so. The basis behind Stack is that we really want to bring in the ideation and innovation process. Um, we're not like a typical 
a student organization that sometimes works on student competitions just because we really want our ideas to come from either talking to people in the space industry, talking to research professors, or getting ideas from the student body, either Berkeley as a whole or people in the staff organization. Um, from there, we will focus mainly on the research of that idea or the research of that design. Um, research is really important core to SAC just because it lets us know what is feasible um, in terms of the space industry as a whole, but also for SAC. Um, and then we also work with proposals and funding. We do networking with the industry and with the uh, private and public sector. Um, and then we do en engineering projects, we design, prototype, we build, and we have partnerships. Um, so like I said, because we have a lot of partnerships, we do a lot of research, we work with a lot of research labs on campus. These are just a few. Um, we also try to work with other campuses in California, um, including UCSB, um, and we try to uh, work with other departments. So even though we are focused on engineering, we have a lot of partnerships outside of the engineering department, uh, like MCB, um, like uh, various engineering majors. Um, and now Malhar is going to talk about the external stuff we do. Hey everyone, I'm Mulhar, I'm a third year EEX, and I'm the external VP of Stack. So just a bit about external. You know, Travis mentioned like $13 billion was poured into the space industry since the 2000s. So we try to look for the kind of people that were putting a lot of money to see if they could help us out and help us create the new space technologies that would shape the future. So for example, two things listed above are two different examples of ways we're trying to engage with the industry. First, at a more micro level, we had a crowdfunding campaign that was relatively successful last year. And we were even featured on the front page of the Berkeley website, which is pretty cool. And then after that, we said, how do we go beyond that? So we decided to reach out to external advisors. Some people on here you may know, others you may not. There's a lot of venture capital funds which invest primarily into space companies. There's also Kickstarter, and there's also small space companies. And all these are ways to help us at an engineering level as well as at a monetary level. So in order to expand on that, things Stack's trying to do within the next semester are two main things. First is a Kickstarter relied on the entirety of Stack, where we're going to raise a certain amount of money in order to help sustain Stack as an overall club. The second is a symposium that's going to happen at the end of April. Think what you're about to see now, except at a much larger scale. You're going to start to see a lot of the manufacturer demos and just see a lot of cool people from industry as well as at school. Because the main thing that Stack's trying to do is build a community around space. Because guess what? Like A lot of the people in this room are interested in space. And you may not know them now, but we hope by the end of this, you'll at least meet a few other people in this room, get to know them better, and see like you all have common interests in that sense. So then after that, I'll introduce a lot of the projects now, and they can say what they're doing, and then you can meet them afterwards for more information. So I guess first we'll do uh, the how-to balloon, Avi. Mm -hmm. What? It's just that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> Not bad. Okay. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Avi. I'm the how-to balloon project lead. Uh, so basically, I sort of run like stacks like altitude balloon project. And so the reason Stack is like doing Working with hot balloons is uh, hot balloons are a great way to work uh, with things in near space and do experiments for near space, which is still part of space. Um, and so it's a really cost effective way to launch scientific experiments and stuff in this space. So I'm working on, our, my team is working on building that hot balloon, and we have some partnerships with NASA uh, to launch some of their experiments into space, and we're also working with the University of Houston and stuff like that. Um, so if you're interested, our table is right over there, so feel free to talk to us a little bit more about our progress and stuff uh, after the presentation. Thanks so much. Okay, so unfortunately the project lead for time one couldn't be here because he works full time. Um, but I will present on it since I am one of the members on that team. Um, our time one, time stands for the interstellar microgravity experiments. Um, are, is a set of microgravity payloads 
um, that has various experiments on it. And a microgravity payload is a payload, so it's a little, it's like a small box that gets sent on a parabolic flight profile um, on Blue Origin's rocket. So Blue Origin is uh, founded by Jeff Bezos, who also founded Amazon. Um, and basically, you get three minutes of microgravity where you can test whatever experiment you want. Um, in our current setup, we're testing things to do with C. elegans, which are roundworms, um, laser ablation, and also laser communication. So if you're interested in any of those or learning just more about microgravity payloads in general, uh, come to the time one table that's over there. Hey guys, I'm the project lead for Time 2, which is the sequel to the first time project. And pretty much Time 2 is like, we want these microgravity experiments to become like a yearly thing so that every year there's new members, everyone can like get their new ideas because there's like infinite ideas we could do for microgravity. So what we've been focusing on is trying to send up like bacteria, stem cells, and CRISPR and do like lots of cool things with them. So in order to do that, we need like a super small incubator that like can control for thermal and CO2 percentages and then also have like automation within there that can help do the different experiments. So that's our primary focus for the semester. Hey y'all. I'm Varun. Uh, I'm, a, I, I, I'm the project lead for the CubeSat deployer team. And basically what we do is, uh, so for interstellar travel, there's, uh, it's kind of a really good way to communicate uh, and also to propel things to inter like interstellar speeds to go to other places. Uh, lasers are very good, <laughs> right? And so what we're, our project is doing is trying to use uh, laser communication and uh, building like a framework for it. So essentially we just like launch little satellites from a bigger satellite and uh, Orient uh, and like control our both system, both of our systems to have la a laser con link for as long as possible, and yeah, it's pretty fun. If you just want to know more about our progress and what we've uh, exactly been doing, come to, come to the back. It's a party back there. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, my name is Anushka. I'm the rover team lead, the autonomous rover team. And so as Travis mentioned before, there's a big um, just push for everyone to return back to the moon. As we see, there's many benefits to it, but we specifically are focusing on making a rover in collaboration with NASA Ames and their LCOTS mission uh, that will be able to not only roam autonomously, meaning it will be able to move and traverse the terrain without having programs fed into it constantly, and then also be able to uh, extract resources. We specifically are focusing on water right now as it is something that's been imaged widely and has great implementations for making things like rocket fuel, and also because we're looking into the prospect of starting off with a small extraction method and then moving up to volatiles. So right now we're focusing on microwave extraction. We are looking for like a lot of mechies, people interested in chemistry. So if you're interested, definitely check us out. We have both our autonomous team and our mechanical team over there. Thank you. Really quickly, um, so as Anushka mentioned, part of um, the rover project is we want to physically build some kind of extract and extract a resource extraction rover system. Um, but the other part is that we also want to create a fully autonomous system so that these rovers um, can drive around without the need for humans to interact. So the autonomous rover team also has um, uh, a very good team over there that's working on creating, looking into machine learning and artificial intelligence algorithms to try to build this autonomous system. Hi, my name is Will. Um, I am the lead on the Biosphere project that we're doing, which is a goal at like trying to work on habitization or like how we think about uh, making a habitat for humans uh, once we were able to get to Mars or other extra uh, extraterrestrial colonies. Um, the project is extremely diverse. Like I've got a Meki, uh, a Kemi, and um, an Eeks uh, worker who are all my like they're all fantastic. And we come together doing diverse things and tasks for this project and. I think one of the biggest problems with us is, is trying to make this, uh, you know, an undergraduate research project as well as like just the super cool idea of a biosphere, which would have awesome implications that are pretty obvious. Um, but we've at least in this last semester been able to gain some footing, and um, we're gonna we have most of our CADs done. We think we're gonna start construction in this next semester for our first prototype. Hi, my name is Jacob. I'm the 
please come check me out over here. Our formal name of the project is the C Project. Uh, so all the leads have given a quick introduction um, about the projects. Oh yeah, my name is Philip, by the way. Uh, I'm the I'm the engineering director for Stack. Um, so yeah, let's go into the timeline for Stack. So all of these projects, um, we want Stack to kind of be um, a consistent program where we're going to be having high altitude balloon launches every semester, as well as a microgravity launch every year. And so we're working really hard to make this happen, um, and so that Stack can be a prosperous club for the coming years. So all of you guys are here today at the Stack Showcase, and you're welcome to see all the other team, all the teams here, um, and the progress that they've made. Um, so excitingly, next month we have the High Altitude Balloon Team, and they'll be making their first launch um, next month. We also have a second High Altitude Balloon launch also coming this semester. Um, and we've seen lots of popularity with various research teams wanting to get their payloads sent on that high altitude balloon. Um, also, we have um, the first time launch, which is going to be happening in summer. And so that team is working really hard to make sure that the payload is going to be ready to be launched on the Blue Origin rocket. And um, the autonomous rover team is working hard to, one, on the autonomous side, start building an actual algorithm that can be deployed as well as kind of uh, researching. And the mechanical team is looking into building the resource extraction system as well as the physical rover itself. And we're hoping to converge um, at the beginning of next school year to be able to test those two systems together as one. Uh, lastly, we have the CubeSat launch. Uh, we're currently pushing for hard to fully build the system so that we can get this rocket launched, and actually, or get this CubeSat launched and put into space. And that will hopefully be very exciting, and we're hoping that we'll have future CubeSat launch, launches to come as well. And of course, we have the time two, which is the second microgravity experiment, which we're hoping to um, also push out next year, as Stack does want to have these microgravity experiments every year. And so, yeah, that's all we have currently planned, but this is just a quick sneak peek. And hopefully, um, yeah, Stack will have a bunch of other cool projects to come and travel. So talk more about that. Yeah. Um, so just like we'll have a little more slides, but just so you guys get the layout, like it kind of goes in terms of altitude, in terms of like where the teams are. So like Hab, like altitude balloon, microgravity, CubeSat in the back, um, and then rover, and then a biosphere right here. So you guys can like make sure you know how to do it. We'll put it up at, up at the end as well. Um, yeah, I think Olivia will talk now about this. So um, Stack is, the, when Travis and I co-founded this club, we kind of took an approach to how the leadership of the club um, would be made. And we definitely wanted everyone to take part. And we wanted to have a lot of leadership positions. So um, most of the people who are here today or who are in Stack are project members, and you can, you will if you join, you become a project member in a specific project. And that's generally based on the need of the project as well as your interests. Um, from there, like you've already seen all of the project leads presented, and they are basically responsible for that individual project. We also have engineering experts who jump from project to project to give help wherever it is needed. So they generally excel in like an engineering subfield or a scientific subfield. And they're really there to support any team that feels like they're lacking on a certain front. Um, and then from there, we also have development leadership. So that includes just normal um, like social officers and then also the executive core. And we'll be standing at this table. Um, so I kind of already described this slide, but um, any uh, role that's highlighted and underlined in blue on the slides are positions that haven't been filled yet that we are hoping to fill in the future or this semester. So if you're interested in any of those positions, um, please apply and Camille will talk about that a little later. It's me again. So this is our social slide. 
So as the internal vice president, it's my job to make sure that we are all not just engineering students who work really hard and make successful projects, but also our friends and hang out and do things. So as you can see from these pictures, we do that. We do things. So the bottom left-hand picture is we had a barbecue over the summer. And the top left-hand picture is an example. We get um, lunches together fairly frequently. The middle picture is from a visit to NASA Ames, right? Not NASA Ames. And then we have some pictures on the right, which are, are from going to conferences, really cool, fun space conferences. But um, we were founded as a group of friends. And as we expand and add more friends to our little family, we do family and fun things together. So that's also part of this club. So we have rolling applications. So if you don't feel like you're ready to apply right this very second, that's OK. You can apply at any time. And I know that companies always say this, that they like, keep your application on file. Well, we legitimately do that. We keep applications on file until a position is available as like new projects are started, as people graduate, as people move on in their educational careers. Um, we go to our applications and we find people that fit those roles. And we reach out to them and we bring them on. And we send out, we do interviews every week. It's super fun. I am in charge of recruitment, so I do a lot of interviews. So I see some of the people that I interviewed today are sitting here today, so that's good to see. And all, as it says, all candidates will know about their membership decisions the following week, even if it's just that you're being put on hold until another position is available. But we're very clear and transparent with everybody. So do not be afraid. So here's that attendance link again, if you want to apply. I need to get your email list. Yeah, so this is our last slide. Um, thanks, Camille, for talking about the recruitment stuff. Um, so for basically like to kind of like summarize um, why, why, like why we're doing this um, is because like every, I don't know if you noticed, like every project kind of helps us get like one step closer to some longer term goal, um, whether that's a CubeSat that's trying to enable like very lar like long term interstellar travel, um, or like a high-altitude balloon that's trying to enable some smaller scale research. Um, like, you you can't go around just assuming all these grand ideas get built. Um, we try to actually take the approach where like maybe this isn't getting worked on, and how can we play like a small role to keep these projects moving forward? Um, and so we really want to like make sure we question like conventional assumptions, and that's like all throughout the club, um, and even like how we run our own club. Um, and so every project is research in nature, and so once something gets launched or gets finished, we'll publish into a journal and get our names on a research paper. Um, and yeah, like so either like you will have research or a launch into space as like the final goal, and that's like kind of like our end-all, be-all for each project. Um, and we're trying to set up like a program for each one so we have like a semester or yearly type thing. Um, and so that's kind of how it's set up. Um, if you have any questions um, about like overall things about the club, you can come talk to all the execs who are here and then all the teams are spread out and they have like slides ready for you and are like willing to able to talk to you about anything. So um, that's the end of the like presentation slide. Feel free to get up and like talk. Thank you. There was no link to the website.